Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my Java video tutorial series. In this part, I'm going to cover a whole bunch of other different things, like accepting user input, a whole bunch of math functions, and a whole bunch of other random things as we come about. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go over here on the left side of the screen, and I'm going to come down to Default Package. Right-click on that, go New, and I'm using Eclipse here. If you didn't watch part one of this tutorial, you should definitely check it out. And I'm going to click on File. So I'm going to call this Java Lesson 2.java. And I'm going to hit finish. And it opens up here on the screen. I'm going to show a whole bunch of new different things here. First, I'm going to show you how to import an external class. All you do is go import. If you don't understand this whole thing about classes and all that, don't worry about it. I'm going to get into it later on. All this means is I'm going to import a bunch of functions and methods that I want to be able to use here. So you just go import. And I'm going to go java.util.scanner. And this guy's going to help me be able to accept user input, which is going to be really cool. And if by chance, you wanted to import the entire Java utility library, you would just do it this way and put a star there. And that would install everything. So everything would be available for you to use in that situation. But I'm not going to use that. I just want scanner. Well, then I'm going to type in public class. I'm going to create our little program here. And remember, public means it can be used by anybody. And a class is just a blueprint for what we're creating here. And of course, you have to make sure that the name of this class that you're creating here is the same as the name of your Java file. Now, we're going to create a new scanner object. And just this guy's just going to allow people to be able to ask our program different questions, such as enter a number, as you see here on the right side of the screen. And remember, from before, static just means that only a class can call for this statement to execute. So we're going to go static, and we're going to call scanner which is the scanner object here, and we're going to give it a name of user input. And anytime you want to create a new scanner object, you have to type in the word new and then scanner. And you're always going to do this. And then what you have to do is define the input stream that you want the scanner object to look at for input. And that's going to be system in, which is going to be the user's keyboard. And then what we're going to do now that we have the scanner tool set up, we're going to go to public, static, void, and void just means that the main function that every one of our programs must have does not return a value when it's done execute. And we're going to define that we're going to need a series of string objects called args to be accepted into this guy. And just like before, don't worry about that yet. We're going to get into that later on. Then we're going to want to print a message out on our screen. So we're going to use system out and we're going to use print this time instead of print line. The only difference between those two is print does not cause a carriage return after it prints stuff out on the screen and print ln does. So that's the only difference there. No reason to worry about it. And then I'm going to say your favorite number and ask them for their favorite number and put a little space after that. And don't forget to put the semicolon in there. And then I'm going to introduce you to the if statement. It is what is called a conditional statement. And just simply what that means is it's going to perform certain actions if something is true. So we're going to say if user, and this is going to be a nice little tool, input dot has next int. And what this function does right here, or method, is it is saying if the next thing typed into the keyboard is an integer. So if the person types in a number that does not have decimal places, I want you to perform all of the code or execute all of the code that lies between these two curly braces. That's it. And there are other versions of this guy. Remember, this is your user input, which you created up here. This is going to be the object you're going to be using and has next int. What it does is it said, is the next thing that's typed into the keyboard an integer? That's all that does. And there's different versions of this guy. If you want to check if the next thing typed in is a double, for instance, which is a number that does have decimal places, you're going to instead type in dot has next double. And if you want to make sure it's a float, as next float. And there's also the same exact things. All you're going to have to do is put an uppercase version of this. Type in boolean or byte or long or short. And I went over what all these different things are in the previous tutorial. And of course, byte is going to be uppercase. So that's how to check what type of 
primitive value was typed in by the user. Now we're getting back into the meat of this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new integer and we're gonna call it number enter. I right, like that, make sure you define it. And then we're gonna call for user input, which is a nice little tool here. And we're gonna call next int, which is a nice little function. And what this does is it receives user input and stores it in the variable named number entered, and that is an integer. So we're saying that we expect the user to enter an integer. If we wanted to instead get a double, we would have next double. I think you're starting to see exactly where we're going here. Or next float, if we expected a float value. And if we expected a string, which is what you're gonna use most of the time, next line. And of course, there's also Boolean byte, long and short. And just so you know, if they enter a type that is not valid, which means in this situation, if they enter something that's not an integer, your program will crash. But we're learning here and eventually we'll get around that. So don't worry about it. Well, then what we're gonna say is that we want to, if they did enter an integer, because that's what this guy's checking, it's saying, if it's an integer, then we want to create this new variable and we want to store whatever they typed in into this new variable. We're going to go print line. And in this situation, I mean, this is just silly. We're just going to say exactly what they entered. You entered, and then we're going to go plus, and we're going to go number entered. And that's going to do pretty much what you think it's going to do. And we can show you. Let's just run this guy. And it says your favorite number. I'm going to type in 13, hit enter, and it's going to say you entered 13. Okay, not a magical experience, but that's okay. We're going to learn a lot more here. Now, let's say we want to do something like print out an error message if they did not enter an integer, which why would they have we even known about that except because you don't even bring that up up here, but either way. Well, you use the else if you want to perform certain actions in which they did not enter what we originally thought they might enter. And in this situation, we're just going to copy this right here, paste that in there, enter an integer next time. Well, this keeps us from having errors with this little else statement. And later on, I'm gonna get into else ifs and so forth and so on. But you guys are smart. You probably already know what an else if is and how it's gonna work. And let's just run this guy. Leave any questions or comments below and I'll be more than happy to help you out. My favorite number in this situation, I'm gonna type in a series of characters and it's gonna say enter an integer next time. So that's pretty easy to understand. Let's say I wanna perform all kinds of mathematical calculations based off the number entered. Well, there's a whole bunch of them that are available. So let's say we want to create an integer num entered times two. I'm gonna name this and I'm just gonna say number entered and all the code is underneath of this video and it will help you learn this stuff. So you should get it and read it. So there we are, we're just performing some basic arithmetic here to figure out what this number they entered is plus itself or times two. Either way, they both work the same way. And then if we want to print out a special message based off of that, I'm going to use the print line again here. And I'm going to say number entered plus and put a space in there plus go after this, go plus number entered plus, and I'm just combining variables and strings here, is equal to, and then I'm gonna put another plus sign in there, and take number entered times two. And then don't forget, put your semicolon. Java will flip out if you forget that. Jump over here, type in 45, and not only does it enter 45, but it adds them together and does little nice things there. Now, of course, there's countless numbers of other different things you can do. Let's just copy this, save ourselves a little bit of time, and paste that there. You can, of course, also say subtract two, so num and entered. I'm going to call this minus two. And then we're just going to have number entered. And then I'm going to change this to a subtraction and put a two inside of there. And yes, you can do that. And you can come down here and go number entered plus. Okay. Well, here we're just going to cut this all off and instead replace it with minus two because we know what it is. And then we're going to copy this variable right here. Paste. Of course, come in here and put a plus sign and quotes. Sometimes Eclipse drives me crazy with it wanting to do everything for me. Okay, beautiful. It's just going to take the number they entered. It's going to tack on this string there and then actually this doesn't make any sense. Let's take that out of there altogether. Now that's much better. And then it's going to print out the number entered minus two and the value that this guy up here built for us. And of course we can perform all kinds of other different mathematical operations. I just copied and pasted that. So let's say that we wanted to do number entered times, and instead I'm going to say self. 
In this situation, I'm just going to change this to a multiplication. So just put a little fancy star inside of there. Here, come down here, copy this, throw this in as my final result. Come over here, change this to multiplication, even though it's not really going to matter. And now it's going to perform a multiplication times itself or a square. Then we can come down here again and let's do a division. Well, you just put that forward slash, come down inside of here. We're going to change this to forward slash. And let's say we want to divide by two. And then copy, paste that in there. And let's just run this just to see how it works. I think you probably get it. Favorite number, let's type in 56. And it's automatically going to perform those calculations and print everything out here on the screen, which is kind of cool. The only other thing I did not use here, which are basic things you're going to use pretty much all the time, modulus you may not use all the time. What modulus does, the way it differs from a basic division is it returns the remainder of that division. So I'm just going to come in here and just call this remainder. And let's do a division by two. Change this to modulus instead and run this guy. And let's put 43 inside of there. So there is a remainder and 43 modulus two. The remainder of that division is going to be equal to one. Let's do a couple more that are maybe a little bit more interesting. If you wanted to do a shorthand addition like this, let's say you have a variable. Let's just say number entered. All right, so let's say you want to add two to number entered and then save it back into the original number entered value or variable. You could go and do it this way. Number entered is equal to number entered plus two. And of course, put a semicolon on there at the end. Or you could do this in a much easier way. The shorthand way to do this inside of Java and numerous other different programming languages is actually to replace what I have highlighted on the screen and instead put a plus sign followed by an equals. That is going to allow you to do exactly the same thing in a much shorter way. And another thing you can do, let's say you want to subtract two and then save it back to the original variable. No problem, just put a subtraction in it. There you go, now you can see it. So that's a shorthand way of doing that. And you can also shorthand come in here and let's say that you want to decrement. You want to lower this value by one. Just take the variable name, put two negatives and put a semicolon. There you are. Automatically lowered that variable's value by one. You want to increment it or raise it by one. No problem. Just put two pluses right like that. So there's shorthand ways to do a couple different things inside of Java are kind of neat. And then Java also has a math library that's kind of cool. It has a whole bunch of different things, which I'm not going to touch on most of them. Let's say you wanted to find the absolute value for a number. So let's just call this number ABS equal to, you type in math with uppercase M, followed by ABS, absolute value. And then let's say we want to put number entered inside of there. And that is all you'd have to do to find the absolute value for this variable inside of here. So that's kind of useful, and it will be if you do any type of math work inside of here. If you want to find out what is a bigger number, comparison, like one or the other is bigger. There's a what's called a max function inside of this guy, meaning Java. So let's say which is bigger. And you would go equals to, and again, it's gonna be math dot max. And let's say you wanted to find out if five or seven is bigger. Well, that's exactly how you do it. And of course, there's also a minimum version of this. I wanna find the minimum. What this is gonna do is it's gonna kick back, in this situation, max being seven. And if you just change this to min, it's gonna kick back five instead. And oh, by the way, I've never talked about what I was doing here with these things, but whenever you put two forward slashes, this is a comment inside of Java. And if you want to put in multi-line comments, you should put a forward slash star. And Eclipse is nice enough to go in there and allow you to put all types of comments. And comments are completely ignored inside of Java. If you want to return the square root of an argument, well, of course, you have to pass it a double and let's just say square root is equal to call the math dot sqrt function and let's say you want to find the square root of 5.23 that's exactly what it's going to do and it's going to return a double so make sure this guy is a double that this variable here is a double and there are numerous different ways to round numbers inside of java so let's say you want to return the ceiling or we want to just simply round the value of a number up well we're going to actually call this an integer because that's what it is and we're going to call it num ceiling. And if we want to force or cast the value that is returned from the function we're going to be called, which is math, C-E-I-L. See, this guy, math, C-I-L, returns a double. But if we want to force it, 
to return an integer. Instead, we just have to put this little cast feature here and it's going to return this and it's all going to be nice and happy because it's going to return an integer. And then, of course, there's numerous different ways to do rounding. So if instead of using ceiling to round a number up, we want to round a number down, in this situation to 5, in this situation right here till 6, we would instead call floor, of course, delete that. So this is going to round this number down to 5. And just put this in here. So that's 6, and that's 5. And if you want to round based off of the fraction, meaning if it's 5.5, it's going to automatically round to 6. But if it's 5.2, it's going to automatically round downwards to 5. Of course, there is a round function inside of Java. And guess what it's called? Let's just call it number round. And it is R-O-U-N-D, round. And this guy is, since it's 5.2, going to round this to 5. And if it was 5.6, it would round it to 6. And then as the final thing, I'm going to show you how to get some random numbers inside of Java. There's actually a bunch of different ways, but I'm going to show you the simplest way. Let's say you wanted to get a random number, so I'm just going to call it int random number. And I'm going to put my little cast tool inside here so that I make sure it returns an int. And I'm going to go math.random. Call this little function here, and it is going to actually create a random number that is between the values of 0 0.0 through 0.99999. It doesn't actually get to 1. Okay, so that's what this is going to return, meaning math random. So if I want to make a number, meaning a random number, that is going to be between the values of 0 and 10, actually 9, that's all I do. I just put in the maximum number that I don't want to show up. If we wanted this to be between 0 and 10, we will put 11 inside of there. That's exactly what this guy is going to do for us. And then we can actually print this out. Let's just copy this, save ourselves some time, and type in random number plus random number. Close that off, close that off, and then execute. And you can see here we are again. Let's just throw in 57, and it kicks out everything, and it kicks out a random number that is equal to 8. So there's a whole bunch of different ways you can use math functions and a preview of the if statement and a whole bunch of other different things like importing classes and all the other stuff that we covered. Leave any questions or comments below. And yes, I promise I will completely cover Java in this video tutorial. Till next time.